Where Does Money Come From is not just a book about how modern banking works in the UK. It gets to the root of a very fundamental question about how new money is actually created. And just as importantly, who decides where and how that new purchasing power gets spent into the economy. You might think the answers to these questions were well known and uncontroversial, but in fact that's not the case. Um, so for example, one in three people actually think that when you pay your cash into the bank they look after it safely for you. But that's not the case at all. When you pay money into the bank, it becomes the property of the bank and they just promise to pay it back to you when you ask for it. The majority of people who have a slightly better understanding of what banks do, they, they think that banks take in money from savers and lend it out again to borrowers. Well, that's not the full picture either. And apart from anything else, it begs quite an important question, which is where did that money come from in the first place? There's a lot of confusion about the nature and the essence of money. And a lot of people think that money's value is derived from the fact that it's a commodity, that it occurs naturally in nature and is, is finite. The reality is that money is a social relationship. We can look at the historical records that show us that actually thousands of years before gold and silver coins, uh, people were engaging in accounting. They were engaging in relationships of credit and debt, the Egyptians, the Mesopotamians, the Greeks, and this preceded uh, modern coinage. So money essentially is a relationship of credit and debt. It always has been and it always will be. Essentially, the vast majority of money in circulation today is created by commercial private banks. How do they do this? They do it by extending credit, by making loans to me and you, which at the same time creates a deposit in our bank that can be used to make routine payments to everyone else in society. Now they actually do this, there's three different ways that banks do this. They make loans directly, they provide us with overdraft facilities, and where we draw down on those overdraft facilities, that creates bank deposits. And finally, banks themselves can buy existing financial assets, which also creates deposits. In essence, bank deposits our money because they are accepted not just between me and you, so they're not just IOUs of a personal nature, they're IOUs of an impersonal nature because everyone else in the UK accepts them for payment. And why do they do that? Because we can pay our taxes, our most routine common payments using bank deposits. So in essence, bank deposits are money and banks create money. This isn't just an academic debate. The amount of new money that's created and either pumped into the economy or actually sucked out of it has a huge impact on our economic recovery and on jobs. But also, the question of what this new money is spent on. Who decides how much of it goes to consumer spending or to mortgages, how much of it goes to new infrastructure or small businesses, and how much of it's just used for financial speculation? These all have a huge impact as well on the economy. And the question is, should we have a more democratic and transparent oversight of how those decisions are made? Understanding how the money system works is crucial to understanding the stability of the whole financial system. Because our current system tends to mean that there's too much money pumped into the economy during uh, booms, which gives us a credit bubble, and there's too little money being put into the economy during a recession, 
which makes the downturn worse than it needs to be. There are other ways of doing it and the system that we have today where credit is highly deregulated uh, is actually quite a recent phenomenon. It's only been around um, since the, the 80s and the 90s really. And before then, uh, there was widespread use of credit controls, of credit guidance in terms of both the quantity of credit uh, and how it was allocated into the economy for, for what purposes. Uh, and that includes in the UK and Europe and America, not just uh, East Asia, where it was very commonly used. So, for example, in the UK during the First World War, Bradbury bills were issued directly by the government to, to ensure production was maintained. Other systems are not just theoretical. There are real examples that we need to explore seriously in order to create a better financial system today. What we're asking for is to have a proper, thorough and reasoned debate about how the monetary system and our current system of money creation and allocation uh, works and what the impacts are for financial stability and for economic prosperity. Because we haven't had that. We haven't had that during the Independent Commission on Banking's deliberations. It hasn't been asked by the Treasury Select Committee. And after all, Mervyn King said that of all the possible systems of banking, the worst is the one we have today. So it would be a terrible mistake to not ask ourselves the question, is our current monetary system the best possible system we could have?